Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today, we will discuss on VIP questions for chapter 1, Electrostatic. For questions number 1, figure 16.1 shows three point charges that lie along the x axis in a vacuum, determine the magnitude and directions of the net electrostatic force on Q2. Okay, so now we are referring is Q2. So Q2 is actually a track to Q1 because Q1 is negative, Q2 is positive, so it will experience F21. And at the same time, Q2 also will attract to charge 3, okay, where positive charge will attract to negative charge. Okay, so Q2 and Q3 is experienced attractive force. So I label it as charge Q2 attract to charge Q3. Okay, so meaning that there are two forces acting on Q2. So we need to find, first step, we need to find the magnitude of F21, where F21 is equal to K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. And remember to modulus because we only want to find the magnitude. So I will substitute K is 9 exponent 9. Q1 is negative 4 micro and Q2 is positive 3 micro. Okay, and then the distance here is 0 0.2 squared. So remember we will modulus it because we only want the magnitude. Okay, therefore the answer for F21 is equal to 2.7 Newton. Okay, next is F23. Okay, so it's equal to K Q2 Q3 over R square. K is 9 exponent 9. Q2 is 3 micro. Q3 is negative 7 micro. Okay, and then the distance is 0 0.15 square. Again, remember to modulus. Okay, because we only want to find its magnitude. Okay, so after pressing the calculator, we will get 8.4 Newton. Okay, then we need to find the resultant force acting on Q2. Okay, where it's equal to F23 plus negative F21. Okay, so negative here indicate that the directions of F21 is acting to the left. Okay, so I substitute F23 is 8.4 plus negative 2.7. Therefore, the answer is positive 5.7 Newton. Okay, so positive here indicate that the directions of the net force acting on Q2 is to the right. So the answer is A. Okay, next question number two. Okay, determine the electrostatic force on Q3. Okay, so Q3 is the point or the charge that we want to find. Okay, so here Q3 is positive charge so it will attract to Q1 where Q1 is negative okay so this one I will label it as F3 attract to charge 1 okay so at the same time Q3 is positive charge it will attract to Q2 okay and it's acting to the right okay so I will label it as F3 attract to charge 2 okay so similar like just now we need to find what is the magnitude of F31 and F32. Okay, so first step, we need to find the magnitude of F31, where F31 is equal to K, Q1 is 6 micro, Q3 is 4 micro. Okay, so if let's say you want to put negative later, you need to put the, uh, the modulus huh? because you only want to find the magnitude. Okay, and the radius here or the distance is 0 0.15 squared. <laughs> Therefore, F31, we will get 9.6 Newton. Okay, next is F32, where it's equal to K, Q2, negative 5 micro, and Q3 is positive 4 micro, and the distance between that is 0 0.10 squared. Okay, so the answer that we will get for F32 is 18 Newton. Okay, so after that, what should we do is we need to resolve it into x and also y component. Okay, so step one, we need to find the magnitude of F1, 3, 1 and F32. Step two is we need to find the, okay, we need to resolve it into x and also y component. Okay, so here I will draw a table where we can resolve it into Fx and also Fy. So F31, okay, F31 is this, okay, this is F31. So F31, we can resolve it into x component where it's equal to 9.6 cos 60 degree and also 9.6 sine 60 degree okay whereas F32 only acting exit is equal to 
Okay, therefore, F32 because it's acting to the right, so we only involve X exit. So X exit is 18 and Y exit is equal to 0. Okay, so the total F for S component is 22.8 Newton and for Y exit is 8.31 Newton. Okay, okay, step 3 is you need to find the magnitude. Okay, so the magnitude F resultant on Q3 is equal to Fx square plus Fy square. Okay, so we substitute 22.8 square plus 8.31 square. Therefore, the magnitude that we will get is equal to 24.27 Newton. Okay, after that, step 4, you need to find the direction. Okay, by using tangent theta equals to Fy over Fx. Okay, and then we will modulus. Okay, Fy is equal to 8.31, Fx is 22.8. Okay, therefore, the angle between X and also Y component, we will get 20. 0 0.02 degree. Okay. Okay. After that, step five is uh, we want to find uh, the the at which quadrant the angle will be. Okay. So if you refer here, x component we get positive, so it's to the right, and y component also we will get positive, so it's adding upward. Okay. So at the end, it's actually adding at the first quadrant. So the answer here is the magnitude is twenty four point. 27 and the angle is 20.02 and the direction is above the positive x exit okay so for this question the answer is d okay next question number three okay which of the following represent the electric field map due to the combinations of two negative charges okay okay so as we know the positive charge electric field line is upward and a negative charge electric field line is into the charge Okay, it's acting inward. Okay, so which one is the correct answer? Okay, the actually the answer is E. Okay, because the electric field line or enter to the negative charge. Okay, and this part is actually empty because this part is actually neutral. Okay, because uh, negative and negative actually you experience a repulsive force. Okay, so the answer is E for question number three. Okay, next we go to question number four. Find the resultant electric field strength. At point A, okay. So at point A, and this is the point A. But at point A, usually, okay, uh, we will assume that there is a positive tensile charge at here, okay. So that is easier for us to determine the directions of the uh, force uh, or the electric field acting on point A, okay. So point A, we assume that it's a positive charge, and here, let's say this is Q1. Q1 is positive for microcoulomb. So positive and positive, it will experience a repulsive force. Okay, so E1 is pushing upward. Okay, and then Q2 is negative 3 microcoulomb. Okay, so our point A and negative charge, positive negative, it will attract downward. So this is E2. Okay, similar like just now, first step, we need to find the magnitude first for E1 and also E2. Okay, where E1 is equal to KQ1 over R square and E2 is KQ2 over R square. Okay, so I substitute 9 exponent 9, Q1 is 4 micro and the radius is 1 meter square. Okay, therefore we will get 3.6 exponent 4 Newton per coulomb. Okay, E2 is 9 exponent 9, Q2 is negative 3 micro and the distance between them is actually 1 plus 3. Yeah? Okay, so this is the distance. Okay, so it's 4 squared. And remember, we only want to find the magnitude. Okay, so you modulus. So finally, we will get 1687.5 Newton per coulomb. Okay, so next is to find the resultant electric field strength at point A. Okay, where we assume that upward E1 is positive and E2 is adding downward, so it's negative E2. Okay, so I substitute E1 is 3.6 exponent 4 plus negative 1687.5 okay therefore e resultant on uh, point a is positive 34312.5 newton per coulomb okay so positive here if based on just now what we assume positive is actually adding upward okay so the answer here is a okay next one is question number five a test charge 1 nanocoulomb placed on a point with the electric field strength 5 exponent negative 5 newton per coulomb determine the electric force okay so this give us the value for q and also e we need to find the force huh? so f is equal to eq 
where e is 5, exponent negative 5, q is 1 nano, so I will convert it into power of negative 9. Therefore, we will get 5 exponent negative 14 newton. Okay, so the answer here is A. Okay, next question number 6. Two parallel conducting plates are charged with equal and opposite charges. Which point has the greatest electric potential? Okay, so usually positive plate, okay, if near to the positive plate, it will have the greatest potential. Okay, so if you compare A, B, C, D, actually point B is the nearest to the positive plate. Okay, therefore the answer here is B. Okay, uh, A actually is out of reach uh, because it's out of the, uh, the parallel plate. So A is not the correct answer. Okay, so the answer is B. Okay, next we want to find the potential difference between point A and also point B. Okay, so point A is this one, positive 100, point B is positive 200. Okay, so when you want to find potential difference across A and B, so we will take VA minus VB. Okay, so VA is 100, VB is 200. Okay, so therefore we will get negative 100 volt. Okay, next one, questions number 9. Okay, find the total potential energy of the system if all charges are 1 coulomb and the distance between them is 1 meter. Okay, so we want to find the total potential energy of the system, meaning that okay, we will find okay, the U between charge 2 and 3, the potential difference between u1 and 2 and also we will find the potential energy between charge 1 and also charge 3 okay so the total electric energy is equal to u12 plus u23 plus u13 okay it's equal to k q1 q2 over r plus k q2 q3 over r plus k q1 q3 over r Okay, so we substitute. Okay, K, we can factorize out where K is equal to 9, exponent 9. Okay, Q1 is 1, Q2 also 1, and the radius also 1. Okay, plus Q2 is 1, coulomb, Q3 is 1, coulomb, and the distance between them also 1. Okay, plus Q1, Q3, and the radius is 1. Okay, therefore it's equal to 9, exponent 9. Okay, 1 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 3. Okay, therefore it's equal to 27 exponent 9 joule. Okay, so the answer here is C. Okay, next we will go to question number 10. An oil drop with the mass of 3.3 exponent negative 15 kilo is released from rest in a uniform electric field. So initially it's at rest, okay. By the two parallel plates, separation is 10 millimeter apart. The oil drop then travel towards the positive plate with the accelerations of 4.5. Okay, so initially it's at rest. Okay, so after that it will accelerate upward. Okay, and because it experiences an electrostatic force. Okay, and at the same time, because they give the questions give you the mass, meaning that we need to consider the weight of this oil drop. Okay. Okay, the parallel plate are connected to the potential of 1000 volt. Calculate the charge on the oil drop and state its sign. Okay, so because after we release, it will accelerate upward, meaning that our F net is equal to MA. Okay, where F, electrostatic force minus MG is equal to MA. Okay, and FE also we can find by using EQ. Okay, it's equal to MA, MG. Okay, we shift to the other side, so it's plus MG. Okay, therefore Q is equal to MA plus MG over E. Okay, so we substitute inside. M is the mass of the oil drop is 3.3 exponent negative 15. Okay, and then A is 4.5 exponent 15 plus G is 9.81 over E. E is the electric field where we don't have. Okay, so the questions give us the value for V and also the separation. Okay, so we can find the value for E by using the equation E equals to V over D where V is 1000. D is the separation is 10 milli. Okay, therefore our E we will get 1 exponent 5. Okay, so I will substitute inside here 1 exponent 5. 
Therefore, the charge, eh, the value for the charge is 1.5 exponent negative 4 coulomb. Okay, so when the charge is attracted to the positive plate, meaning that this is actually a negative charge. Okay, because negative will attract to positive plate. Okay, so the sign we can say is actually a negative charge. Okay, it's the negative charge because it attracts positive plate. Okay, so the answer here is donkey. Okay, so that's all for VIP question chapter 1. Okay, click on the next video. We will continue discuss on VIP question chapter 2. See you on next video. Bye.